the man clearly feels a hole. He feels not uh, completed, right? Because yeah, he's mean, saying, sense, wait a minute, what am I lacking? Like, you're not granting me eternal life by your demeanor. Exactly. Yeah, because he's going to say this. Well, I've done all that, mm -hmm. right? So, like, Jesus, it's clearly there's something else in your mind because if it's simply about keeping the commandments, I've kept them. Yeah. If it's about keeping the law, I've done it. So what else is there? He says, if you would be perfect. He fi he yeah. finally gives the point of the law. Yeah. He goes, you want to be justified? Be perfect. And yep. then he points out where he's not perfect. And he goes, well, go and sell your possessions and give to the poor and your treasures will be in heaven. The point of it is, Jesus says, you're failing the law in your heart. Exactly. That's the problem. You're failing he's, the law in your heart. What he's doing right there, a lot of times, you know this, John, as soon as we hear that, Sell what you possess, give to the poor, you'll have treasure in heaven, come follow me. That there is turned into something like, um, from Jesus himself, friends, uh, surrender all mm. for Christ equals the good news. Yeah, that's Surrender all to Jesus and you'll be saved. That's right. That's the gospel, people say. And we've said this before, the only problem with that message, surrender all for Christ and you'll be saved, is that nobody's ever done it. No. Right. Except so, one. So that's a damning, it's a damning statement. That's right. Not a, a statement of comfort and good news and hope and peace. No. And so what Jesus is doing here is not giving this man gospel. He's doubling down on the law with verse 21. That's right. He's dumping the full weight of the law on this man's conscience. This dude has said, I've done this, Jesus. I've kept the commandments. In other words, when you say I've kept the law, you're saying I've loved God and neighbor perfectly. So Jesus effectively in verse 21 says, Okay, prove it. Yeah. Prove that you've loved God and neighbor perfectly by selling everything you have, giving it to the poor and following me. The man can't do it. And he goes away dejected. That's mm -hmm. the point. You can't do this. That's right. Well, and some people say that's the good news about it. As Jesus says, come follow me. That's the gospel. And I'm like, no, that's not the gospel. Not in it's, this context. No, because to come follow Jesus is something that you have to do and you can't. That's the thing about it. Well, um, it's, it's kind of like forsake all this and follow me. Forsake mm -hmm. sin, come to Christ. And we've been clear on that in the past. If there's something we need to do in order to come to Christ, that's not good news. Well, because, and you have reasons to boast. Well, sure. But I mean, in the first place, you couldn't do it. That's right. In the second place, yeah, you, there's, you have reason to boast, which the, the gospel, or excuse me, the, the epistles make very clear that we don't have any. Well, the funny thing was that someone pointed this out to me the other day. Well, yeah, the, uh, well, the, the disciples left all and followed Jesus. <laughs> it's like until they didn't. <laughs> Until they didn't. And I mean, the, and the way that it's stated with the calling of the disciples is so, it's, it's, it's so matter of fact, Jesus goes and says, Hey, come do this. And they do. And it's like, it's, it's very clear that work the work right of there. God is involved in this and they come and do it. And, and it's, and it is noteworthy that they do follow Christ, but because it's just so plainly stated, it's very obvious, even in the minds of the evangelists who record it, mm -hmm. it's like, yeah, this is Jesus called them and they came and did it because this was all a part of the plan. Obviously. Anyway. Yeah. Um, well, just to, to summarize back down yeah. into it, you know, the disciples are like, wait a minute, Jesus. Yeah. Like, how, you know. What's uh, going on here? <laughs> if he can't be saved. And the they got the point. And that's where, yeah. you know, you can see that it's like they're, they're not catching that Jesus has to die. They're wanting to issue the kingdom now. I mean, the disciples themselves are wrestling through sure. bad theology of law gospel themselves. Yeah, and um, a false, false expect or just improper expectations of even the Messiah and the Messiah's mm -hmm. ministry and all the rest. Yeah, I mean the men a who theology are walking, of glory. All yeah, of the men that are walking with the which you know gives me a lot of comfort to know that men that walked with Jesus struggled to uh, yeah. you know with these type of things. And so, uh, all right, so th those are two. I, I, yeah. I'm like having this urge to get into the next so, section. So, yeah, so let's not really <laughs> maybe last comment from me on the on the rich young man, and then mm -hmm. we'll move into the last passage is the point of it at the end, verses 25 and 6, again, the disciples wig out because they're like, um, if this upright dude who's been blessed because of his obedience, he's wealthy, God's blessed him. If he can't enter the kingdom of heaven, then Jesus, who can be saved? We've mm. explained why they would even ask such a question. And then his answer is beautiful. He says, with man, it's impossible. But with God, all things are possible. Meaning... Right. With man, salvation is impossible. Right, which is the point of the God illustration with the camel and the needle, exactly. eye of the needle. It's like that, that exactly can't, happen. It can't, can't be done. That's right. And so it's in other words, the words, the the words of Christ here are: the man 
thinks he's going to just be justified according to law keeping. Jesus proves to him, you can't keep the law for righteousness. And everybody's freaking out. And well, how can anybody be saved? Christ says, God's going to do it. 